Hello there, YouTubers. Zach, and feel free to argue again. I've been looking at the uh, testimony of Crocker and Petraeus in front of the Senate committee, and honestly, I've been trying to figure out what country they're talking about, because it doesn't sound much like any kind of Iraq that I've been hearing about lately. But the other thing that this whole process has kind of made me curious about is, what do the Iraqis think? I mean, there's a lot of talk about, very patriarchal talk, about what kind of hoops the Iraqis have to jump through before we feel that it's okay to let them be in charge of their own country. Um, but there's very little talk about uh, whether the Iraqis know what's going on in their own country, uh, and how they feel about things. So I thought I'd devote this video to first talking a little bit about some of the statistics in terms of like how the Iraqis feel about the occupation, and then giving some actual um, letters written by Iraqis about it. Um, first thing is a Washington Post publication. This is from uh, September of uh, uh, 2006. A poll released uh, by the Program on International Policy Attitudes at the University of Maryland found that 71% of Iraqis question want the Iraqi government to ask foreign forces to depart within a year. By large margins, though, Iraqis believe that the U.S. government would refuse the request, with 77% of those polled saying the United States intends to keep military permanent bases in the country. Not surprising that they think that, considering we're building billion dollar bases there. Um, further down the same article, the director of uh, an Iraqi polling firm who spoke on condition of anonymity because he feared being killed said public opinion surveys he conducted last month showed 80% of Iraqis who were questioned favored an immediate withdrawal. The very fact that there is such a low support for American forces has to do with the American failure to do basically anything for the Iraqis said Mansour Modal, a professor of sociology at uh, Eastern University University, who commissioned a poll earlier this year that also found widespread support for withdrawal. It's part of human nature. People respect authority and power, but the U.S. so far has been unable to establish any real authority. Well, that's 2006. I had a BBC poll that's a little bit more recent, from September of last year. It's headline, U.S. Surge Has Failed, Iraqi Poll. About 70% of Iraqis believe security has deteriorated in the area covered by the U.S. military surge of the past six months, an opinion poll suggests. The survey for the BBC TV, ABC News, and NHK of more than 2,000 people across Iraq also suggests that nearly 60% see the attacks on U.S.-led forces as justified. The poll suggests that the overall mood in Iraq is as negative as it has been since the U.S.-led invasion in 2003, says BBC World Affairs correspondent Nick Childs. Only 29% think things will get better in the next year, compared to 64% two years ago. Iraq analyst Dr. Toby Dodge pointed to the fact that so many Iraqis saw no improvement to their safety since the U.S. deployed an extra 30,000 troops this year, bringing their number up to nearly 170,000. I think that's a damning critique and an indication of the pessimism and the violence on the ground, he told the BBC's Radio 5 Live. Well, I think it's pretty clear what the Iraqis think. Uh, amazingly enough, even the Sunnis, who expect to get uh, slaughtered by the tens of thousands, also want the U.S. to leave. But I think when we talk about these statistics, we sometimes lose the human face of the occupation. And so I thought, uh, I found something uh, very interesting recently, and that is a uh, Dar Jamail, um, an unembedded journalist working in Iraq trying to find out what the uh, occupation looks like to the Iraqi people, he actually uh, contacted some people in Iraq and said to them, over here in the United States, you know, there are a lot of people saying that the surge is actually going well. How do you all feel about that? Here are some of the responses. 
The first one is from Maki al-Nazal, an Iraqi political now analyst from Fallujah, who is now forced to live outside of Iraq because we destroyed three quarters of his city. The media should not follow the warlords and politicians' propaganda. It is our duty to search for the truth and not repeat lies like parrots. The U.S. occupation is bad, and no amount of media propaganda can camouflage the mess inside Occupy Iraq. We are ashamed of the local and Western media for marketing the naked lies told by generals and politicians. Bush and his heroes, Bremer, Rumsfeld, and now Petraeus, always lied to their people and the world about Iraq. U.S. soldiers are getting killed on a daily basis, and so are Iraqi army and police officers. Infrastructure is destroyed. In a country that used to feed much of the Arab world, starvation is now the norm. It is ironic that Iraq was not half as bad during the 12 years of sanctions. Our liberation has pushed us into a state of unprecedented corruption. The next letter is from 37-year-old Sami Tahir, a Kurdish education advisor living in Baghdad. No improvement in any service can be found in Iraq. On the contrary, we are much worse now, and we are back to painting old buildings to make them look better. Kurdistan is still full of displaced Iraqis from southern and mid-Iraq. Children always went to school before the late 2007 crackdown, and it was mainly military operations that stopped them from doing so in some areas where the Americans attacked towns and villages. Bush has been saying the same words since 2003, but things have always gotten progressively worse in Iraq. He and his generals are destroying both Iraq and the U.S. by continuing this war. The U.S. economy will never hold against the expenses of war, and Iraq is totally destroyed. The final letter comes from Professor S. Abdul Majid Hassan, an Iraqi University uh, faculty member. The year of 2007 was the bloodiest among the occupation years, and no matter how successful the situation looks to Mr. Bush, reality is totally different. What kind of normal life are he and the media referring to, where four and a half million highly educated Iraqis are still dislocated and still being forcefully driven out of their homes for being anti-occupation. How can people live a normal life in a cage of concrete walls? She is referring to concrete walls being erected by the Americans around entire Baghdad neighborhoods, guarded by their kidnappers, killers, and occupation forces. What kind of normal life can you live where tens of your relatives and your loved ones are either missing or in jail and you don't even know if they're alive or, after being tortured, have been thrown, unidentified, into dumpsters. What kind of normal life can you live when you have to bid farewell to your family each time you go out to buy bread because you don't know if you're going to be seeing them again? What is a normal life to Mr. Bush? If we're lucky, we get a few hours of electricity a day, barely enough drinking water, no health care, no jobs to feed our families. But I think the conclusion to her letter is, is actually the most amazing part. Listen to this from the person who just described what you just heard. Most Americans figured out the real reasons behind the invasion of Iraq and the terrible consequences of that war for them, currently and in the future. The American people I know are kind, considerate, and understanding. I am sure they will do what it will take to end this occupation. They know by now that this is not a war of the American people. It is the oil company's war. So why should they sacrifice their young men and women for oil companies' greed? Why indeed?